Hey boss, we need some ideas for our five main dragons for our new Yu-Gi-Oh series. Stand back mate, I got this. Cosmic Phenomena, Burning Devils, Beautiful Flowers, Ancient Fairies, Barb. Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds is the best Yu-Gi-Oh series ever made, or at least the first half is. Best characters, best story, and the best ace monsters, as we've covered in these handy four videos I've made so far. However, the series does get a bit worse after the Dark Signers arc. The characters, the story, and indeed, the ace monsters. Stardust Dragon is still a useful negator with an extensive line of evolutions. Black Rose Dragon is a field nuke that will never go out of style. Red Dragon Archfiend in the original is there, and Ancient Fairy Dragon ended up being so good it got banned for several years. So in introducing the legendary 5th dragon of Yukio 5Ds, what did we get? We got... Black Winged Dragon. Signature dragon of Crow Hogan. And the quality downgrade for this dragon says more about the state of late Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds than I ever could. Black Winged Dragon is a level 8 Dark Dragon generic synchro monster with 2800 attack, 1600 defense, and the following effect. If you would take damage from a card effect, place one Black Feather counter on this card instead. This card loses 700 attack for each Black Feather counter on it. Once per turn, you can remove all Black Feather counters from this card, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. That target loses 700 attack for each Black Feather counter removed, and if it does, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack lost by this effect. This is certainly one of the effects of all time. Obviously, Blackwing Dragon is the worst of the six Sino Dragons by quite a long way. Nullifying burn damage is not a great effect, especially when doing so makes your dragon very easy to run over. I know the idea is to build up a few counters then burn your opponent back for everything you negated. However, the fact that it's not a quick effect means old Blackwinged is going to get slapped up long before you get a chance to deal a maximum of 2800 burn damage. And that's also ignoring the fact that it A has to target a monster, and B has no protection otherwise. It's not a good dragon. I'm not actually sure why it exists, because now it takes the total dragon count to 6 in the series, and 60 sounds like a flavor of monster energy. But hey, don't worry, there's a manga equivalent to Blackwing Dragon. And the manga counterparts for Red Dragon Archfiend and Black Rose were actually really quite good, with Stardust Spark Dragon and Ancient Pixie Dragon being fine monsters in their own right. So, is this where we see the redemption for the Blackwing Dragon Clan? Well, no. Blackfeather Dark Rage Dragon is one of the coolest monster names I've ever heard, and it's a crying shame it's stuck on such a mediocre monster. It has the same type and stats as the original Blackwing Dragon and the following effect. Once per turn, when you take damage, you can send up to 5 cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. Then, if any monsters were sent to the graveyard by this effect, this card gains 400 attack. If I blurred out the name of this card in the picture, you'd probably think it was a Light Sworn, or a Zombie. You know, two decks that actually like milling their own cards. I'm not a veteran Blackwing player, not even close. But even I know they don't benefit from throwing an eighth of their deck into the graveyard after taking damage, which is a relatively specific activation requirement, all for a stat boost of a mere 400. Some cards should really take notes. It doesn't even gain 400 for each monster, so if your opponent is controlling a Masked Beast Discardius, you still won't be able to get over it. However, the effect does stack and doesn't wear off during the end phase, so give it multiple turns and you could even take down the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. You won't be doing that, but it's possible. I'm honestly amazed at how different the two versions of Blackwing Dragon ended up being, especially as this card doesn't even share the same archetype name as the original, so you can't help it with any of the support. It's a bad card made for a deck that probably, and hopefully, doesn't even exist. And for many years, that was Blackwing Dragon. Another two dragons lost to the Annals of Time. While Ancient Fairy Dragon went on to boost meta decks to the point of being banned, Black Wing Dragon was taking up space in a binder as a rare nostalgia card. However, the Yu-Gi-Oh gods chose to look upon this chicken with favor, and we got a handful of Black Wing Dragon support cards. Yes, Black Winged Dragon support, not generic Black Wing support, because then I'd have to cover all of Black Wings, and I barely just got back into making YouTube videos, and nothing would make me want to go into hiding again faster than having to do that. First up, we're going through the support monsters, starting with Blackwing Chinook the Snowblast. It's a level 2 winged beast with 100 attack, 700 defense, and this effect. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Send one Blackwing Synchro Monster or one Black Winged Dragon from your extra deck to the graveyard, and if you do, until the end of this turn, the targeted monster loses 700 attack, also negate its effects. 
This is a quick effect if you control a Dark Synchro monster. You can only use this effect of Blackwing Chinook the Snowblast once per turn. There are two uses for this. First of all, as a more situational effect veiler that requires field presence in order to be a quick effect. The second is to get a Blackwing Dragon into the graveyard, turning it into a surprise tool that will help us later. I'm going to be talking about these cards purely in the context of a Black Winged Dragon deck, not a Black Wing deck. And, for one of those, it's pretty alright. Chinook is a fine one-off if you don't want to run extra foolish burial. Next up is one of many tuners, Black Wing, Vada the Emblem of Wandering. I'm going to stop pointing out the attribute and type because it's clear these things are birds. It's level 2, has 800 attack, and the following effect. If you control a Blackwing monster other than Blackwing Vada the Emblem of Wandering, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Blackwing Vada the Emblem of Wandering once per turn this way. During your main phase, you can send this card on the field to the graveyard along with one or more non-tuner Blackwing monsters from your deck, so that the total levels sent equal exactly 8, and if you do, special summon one Blackwing Dragon from your extra deck. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except Dark Monsters. You can only use this effect of Blackwing Vada the Emblem of Wandering once per turn. You'll find a common theme of Black Wing Dragon support cards is giving you access to the signature monster as quickly as possible, which is doable because the dragon isn't very good. Vata special summons itself from the hand, which is a wonderful effect for a tuner, and it acts as graveyard setup from the deck, while giving you your Black Wing Dragon. It's not treated as a synchro summon, but that's not really a big deal, and the extra deck limitations are fine because you probably won't be running anything except dark monsters anyway. For what it's meant to do, this is a very good card. Moving on to the level 4s, we have Blackwing Oster the South Wind. It's a tuner with 1300 attack and the following effects. Cannot be special summoned. When this card is normal summoned, you can target one of your banished level 4 or lower Blackwing monsters. Special summon it in defense position. You can banish this card from the graveyard to activate one of the following effects. Place Black Feather Counters on one Blackwing Dragon you control, equal to the number of cards your opponent controls. Place one Wedge Counter on each face-up monster your opponent controls that does not have one. The normal summon requirement is a little annoying, but it's not as bad as you think with no thong in your extra deck. It's not hard to get banished black wings with their own effects and allure of darkness, and this card brings one back for an easy synchro. The graveyard effects are… fine? Placing black feather counters on your turn to allow for easier activation of black twing dragon or their new synchro monster is novel if nothing else, and spreading wedge counters helps out armor master, full and standard versions, which are better monsters than black wing dragon anyway. Oster is a solid Blackwing Dragon support card and an even better Blackwing card, as long as you have the normal summon to spare. Blackwing, Sudri the Phantom Glimmer, is a level 4 non-tuner with 1400 attack and defense with the following effects. When this card is normal summoned, you can add one card that mentions Blackwing Dragon from your deck to your hand, except Blackwing, Sudri the Phantom Glimmer. You can tribute one monster, special summon one Phantom Glimmer token, Wing Beast, Tuner, Dark, level 2, 700 attack and defense, then you take 700 damage. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect, except synchro monsters. You can only use this effect of Blackwing Surgery the Phantom Glimmer once per turn. It's your archetypal search card. Just a shame it relies on a normal summon when you might want to use that for Oster instead. The support cards for Blackwing Dragon aren't that bad, so it's worth running one of these, but it's not to be maxed out on. The token spawning effect is also okay, allows for some more synchro plays, but it's more of a side attraction than anything else. Finally, our last main deck monster is Blackwing, Sharmal the Sandstorm. It's a level 4 winged beast tuner with 1600 attack, no defense, and this effect. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, place one Black Feather Whirlwind from your deck face up in your spell and trap zone. If a Blackwing Synchro monster, or Black Winged Dragon, is special summoned to your field while this card is in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can banish this card, then target one Blackwing monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then take 700 damage. You can only use each effect of Blackwing Shamal the Sandstorm once per turn. This is about what you'd expect when making a support card for a bad Synchro Dragon, while also being part of one of the biggest archetypes in the game. It directly activates one of the deck's better support cards straight from the deck. It allows for recovery of monsters, most of which have special summon conditions, and it does damage to you to trigger Blackwing Dragon's effect. The last part isn't going to scare anyone, but the first two effects are very useful, and worth running at least one of these birds. Okay, now onto the Blackwing Dragon spells and traps. I said Blackwing Dragon. Okay, there we go. Black Feather Whirlwind is the only spell card in this lineup. It's a continuous spell with this effect. Once per turn, if you special summon a Dark Synchro Monster from the extra deck, except during the damage step, 
You can target one of your Blackwing monsters or Blackwinged Dragon that is banished or in your graveyard with less attack than the special summon monster, special summon it. Once per turn, if a dark monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can remove one Black Feather counter from your field instead. All in all, it's a solid card. It gives more use to your Black Feather counters, now giving you board-wide protection, and it allows recycling of your synchro materials. The attack point restriction isn't really a big deal considering you'll be bringing back the weaker material for a stronger monster, so for a Black Winged Dragon deck, definitely run a few copies of this one. Their first trap card is Black Wing Twin Shadow. Shuffle two of your Black Wing monsters, one Tuna and one non Tuna, that are banished and or in your graveyard into the deck slash extra deck, special summon one Black Wing Synchro Monster or Black Winged Dragon from your extra deck, whose level equals the total levels of those two monsters. This is treated as a Synchro Summon. If you control two or more Black Wing monsters, you can activate this card from your hand. You can only activate one of these cards per turn. It's a fine comeback card. It's able to summon any Black Wing Synchro monster, not just a Black Winged Dragon, so it's got more versatility than just being a simple piece of legacy support. Especially considering if you need to make a comeback, I can think of several better extra deck monsters compared to this chicken. It's a fine one-off. Their first counter trap card is Blackbird Close. When a monster your opponent controls activates its effect, you can send one face-up Black Wing monster you control to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Then, you can special summon one Black Winged Dragon from your extra deck. If you control a Black Winged Synchro Monster or Black Winged Dragon, you can activate this card from your hand. See what I mean? They just give out Black Winged Dragon for free these days. Or at least, requiring you to negate a monster effect and lose a single Black Winged Monster. Negating monster effects at spell speed 3 is always great. Losing a monster is tolerable, seeing as you're getting a new bigger one as part of the effect, and it being a potential hand trap if you have some existing setup is some extra sweetness to an already decent card. I recommend running one or two. Their final support card is Black Shadow Squall. When a spell or trap card is activated, remove one Black Feather counter from your field, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. If you control Black Winged Dragon, you can set this card from your graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use one Black Shadow Squall effect per turn, and only once that turn. Close handles the monsters, and Black Shadow handles the back row, at least in theory, when it's not busy bricking your hand. It's got an easier activation condition on paper, not requiring you to lose a monster, but it does require you to already have a Black Winged Dragon on the field with some counters saved up, whereas Blackbird Close actively gets you closer to your race monster. I run one Shadow Squall, but it could easily be cut. And with all those cards behind us, we get to the main event. I know this is slightly out of order for an archetype analysis, but please forgive my love for dramatic endings, especially when talking about a mediocre group of cards like this. The long-awaited, by like, three people, evolution of Black Winged Dragon is here. Black Winged Assault Dragon. Not to be confused with Black Winged Dragon Assault Mode, which probably won't be coming out within the next three decades. This is a level 10 Dark Dragon Synchro Monster that requires one Tuna Synchro Monster plus one or more non-Tunas. It has 3200 attack, 2800 defense, and the following effects. Must either be Synchro Summoned or Special Summoned from your extra deck by banishing one Tuna Synchro Monster and one Black Winged Dragon from your face-up field and or graveyard. Each time your opponent activates a monster effect, place one Black Feather Counter on this card when that effect resolves, and if you do, inflict 700 damage to your opponent. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you contribute this card with four or more Black Feather Counters on it, destroy all cards on the field. All in all, it's not that bad. It's not on the same level as Red Nova Dragon or Shooting Star Dragon, not even close, but it's far above the original Black Winged Dragon. Admittedly, it wasn't a high bar. The summoning condition is decently easy, considering how many Synchro Tuners Black Wings actively employ, and you can use materials from the graveyard as well, making this a situational comeback option for a Black Winged Dragon deck, and the levels don't even have to match up. In addition, if you Synchro Summon it legitimately, using a Black Winged Dragon, you can then summon another one straight away via the Banishing Effect. And you know what that means. Rank 10 trains, baby! Burning your opponent for using any monster effects is a fine ability, punishing them for overextending without going overboard, and the quick field nuke is a decent red flag that your opponent has to either deal with or cower away from, though bear in mind it will destroy your cards as well. The worst part about this card is the name, Black Winged Assault Dragon. You lose any synergy with the support cards, like quickly loading it up with Black Feather counters with Osta, or giving the extra effects to the counter traps. It was probably by design to isolate it from the easy summoning support, but it's still a hindrance. It's a certified improvement over the original, and a fairly solid monster, but it's not going to rip apart the meta or anything. 
And now to give a quick overview of the deck's strengths and weaknesses. This isn't going to be that easy, considering I have to limit the context to just how good are these cards at supporting a bad Synchro Dragon and its better evolution. The biggest strength is its consistency. Black Winged Dragon is basically given to you for free off of one card starts more often than not. You can safely run Allure of Darkness, and Black Wings have a bunch of consistency boosters all of their own. You can summon your chicken very easily, and Assault Dragon's alternate summoning method adds a recovery option. Other strengths? Well, there really aren't any, and I'll explain why as we move on to the weaknesses. The biggest one is that you get your main monster very easily, yes, but it's a bad monster. It has no protection and provides no protection, except from trick stars I suppose. The stats aren't super strong, and the burn damage it can dish out isn't particularly scary. Assault Dragon helps with this, but that benefits from very few support cards, and it isn't enough of a step up to elevate Black Winged Dragon to relevancy. Out of the two negates the group of cards has access to, one is pretty decent and the other might not always be available to you. If you're swarming to synchro summon Black Winged Dragon, you're probably better off summoning one of a dozen other more useful Black Winged Synchro monsters that get more benefits from other support cards, have better effects, and will get you closer to winning the game. If you can make Assault Dragon, you can make Full Armor Master. Black Winged Dragon doesn't fit into that archetype despite being made for the character who used it. And as its own thing, a deck built around it becomes an efficient production line producing mediocre product. Grading these cards is difficult, because again, I'm having to isolate them from Black Wings. I think these numbers are relatively fair, given the strength of the consistency and the mediocrity slash weakness of everything else. If I included the whole Black Wing archetype, they'd be very different, but that's not something I'm willing to do. Here's a deck list focused on summoning Black Winged Dragon and the Assault Mode, with the Gustav Max thrown in for shits and giggles. I feel that it sums up my review. It summons Black Winged Dragon very easily, and it doesn't really do much else. What can be said about Black Winged Dragon? Ideally as little as possible. It's somewhat clear that this dragon was never really meant to exist, given a complete lack of presence in the anime up until its reveal in the second half, and being painfully mediocre when it did show up. It's cool that they threw this card a bone and gave it some dedicated support, and that support can be just as useful extending existing Black Wing strategies as well, arguably more so. Black Winged Assault Dragon is a cool evolution, and a deck based on this chicken is playable at the very least, certainly no less so than a Legacy of the Worthless level archetype. So if this appeals to your nostalgia, you can see it fly onto the field in all of its glory, before getting sniped by just about anything under the sun. Now that we've gotten Black Winged support, when are we going to finally get that ancient Fairy Dragon evolution, Fairy Dragon GX? Thank you everyone for watching this archetype analysis, though the term archetype here is looser than the card design team's screws when they designed the original Black Winged Dragon. If you think I've earned it, please check out my Patreon, link in the description. If you have any requests for archetypes, let me know in the comment section below and they'll be taken into consideration. I'm finally free from having to review all the Signer Dragons, so now my skies are wide open and hopefully free of black wing dragons. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video.